uh, uh, respected chairpersons uh, and learned audience, good afternoon. Uh, me, Dr. Noor Alam, Associate Professor of NICVD, is going to present my lecture. Uh, my topic is uh, protection for patients, cardiologists, and ecosystems in COVID-19. Uh, as we know, the COVID pandemic situation in our country a bit improving, but uh, side by side, the eco-cardiography loads are also increasing uh, day by day, and still there is a uh, contamination from uh, COVID-19 virus during eco-cardiography is still prevailing. So uh, I think this topic is uh, important. Thanks uh, the uh, organizer for uh, cho cho choosing this type of topics. Uh, COVID-19 pandemic has created a new unpredictable challenges for modern medicine and healthcare systems. Cardiologists and cardiology departments are heavily affected by this rapidly changing situation. The COVID-19 pandemic also increases the burden on echocardiographic images services. What are the challenges in echocardiography in COVID-19? Common challenges faced during the pandemic include limited availability of expert staffs, the risks of periprocedural transmission between patients and staffs. The challenges are predicted to be prevailed even in the vaccine era. The scope of this presentation is to summarize how these challenges may be addressed during the pandemic. In Bangladesh, near about 140 doctors have been died in COVID-19 till date. We have lost our teachers, our friends, and our colleagues. Salute to the martyrs. There are different guidelines and recommendations. They, they address the issue, uh, the uh, protocol or uh, guidelines for the echocardiography in COVID-19 pandemic. Among them, European Association of Cardiovascular Imaging, American Society of Echocardiography, and uh, National Heart Center Singapore, they address this issue. And also, Bangladesh Cardiac Society, along with Indian Academy of Echocardiography, Cardiac Society of Nepal, and Sri Lankan College of Cardiology, they have made joint consensus statement regarding the safety precaution for doing echocardiography and image acquisition during COVID-19. My uh, lecture is, uh, is a uh, review of this, uh, these uh, recommendations as well as some uh, adding some practical experiences. What are the risks of uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic period uh, during echocardiography? Risks of infection of professionals, risks of contamination of equipments and facilities, and risks of widespread contamination due to transportation of critically ill or high risk patients. Who, where, and how? Which patient will do echocardiography? Echocardiography should not routinely be performed in patients with COVID 19 disease. Not a routine test, should not be a routine test. Only indicated. Echocardiography is only indicated if it is likely to substantially change patient management or it, if it is life-saving. A focused cardiac ultrasound study, focus or focus, is recommended to reduce the duration of exposure. Elective, non-urgent, and routine follow-up exams may be postponed or even cancelled. Where the echocardiography should be done? It is recommended imaging in the patient's room when possible, rather than transporting the patient through the hospital. There should be a separate echo machine for COVID-19 or, or intensive care unit or COVID-19 suspected or, and outpatient department. Ecolab, how will you uh, prepare or arrange Ecolab during this COVID pandemic situation? After each echocardiography examination, the probes should be cleaned thoroughly with soap water or sanitizer or Cydex soap. The examination bed should be covered with a disposable plastic sheet that can be cleaned with sodium hypochlorite solution after each echocardiography examination. On, this is important. Only trained cardiologists, preferably young without any comor comorbidities, should be deputed for doing echocardiography test for the COVID-19 positive or suspected patients. Elderly physicians with or without comorbid conditions should be discouraged to perform echocardiography by themselves. There should be a plastic curtain between the patient and the cardiologist doing echocardiography examination. The plastic curtain might have a central hole through which the operator may, may introduce the probe to the patient. There should be a provision of heavy duty exhaust fan near the patient's bed from the examiner. 
thorough cleaning of the room and surrounding surrounding after each heightened risk patients. It is preferable that doors should be remained open during echocardiography. Under no circumstances, the examiner should sit on the patient's bed for preparing the echocardiography. All sanitization procedures should be adapted for sanitization of the computer, door, handles, metallic parts, switchboard with Cydex or sodium hypochlorite solution. American Society of Echocardiography recommended portable handheld devices during this COVID pandemic era. The portable handheld device might be especially helpful for imagers in point of care ultrasound. For every high risk patient, images might be taken by trained individuals who remained in the patient's room. Later, it could be interpreted by expert outside the patient's room. Regardless, what tool is used for imaging, it is critically important for the imager to minimize their time spent in the patient's room. Level of PP in general, level three PP is required while working in the COVID-19 order. Level two PP is required while working in the COVID-19 suspected order. And the downing and doffing of PP should be done as per guidelines. European Association of Cardiovascular Imaging, they uh, they recommended a level of PP according to the risk, risk estimation of the patient, lower risk, moderate risk, and severe risk. Lower risks are the, those group of patients with no symptoms or a recent negative virus test. Moderate risk, patients with non-specific or unclear symptoms, or patients without symptoms in an area with moderate or high risk of COVID-19. Though nowadays, uh, all areas are su 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 suspected for moderate or high risk in our uh, present situation. Severe risks, patients with typical symptoms or confirmed COVID-19. Uh, this is a table. This table, uh, the European Association of uh, Cardiovascular Imaging, uh, they recommended for transthoracic echocardiography, PPE level and hot types of PPE used for hot kind of patients. In lower risk group of patients, moderate risk, severe risks. In lower risk group of patients, Hand washing, is, uh, hand washing is mandatory for all group risks of patient. Surgical masks and gloves is preferable for lower risks, but uh, mandatory for moderate and severe risks or confirmed COVID patients. Protective clothing or uh, protective gown or uh, coverall and eye protection is preferable in lower and moderate risks, but mandatory for severe risks or COVID confirmed patients. Head cap is not necessary in mild or moderate risk patient but must uh, mandatory for severe risk patient. Extent of echocardiography. Hot, uh, hot extent of echocardiography will do. Full, full study of echocardiography is recommended in lower risk group. And uh, also full study, uh, full, uh, full study will be recommended uh, for uh, moderate risk group. Uh, and, but in case of severe risk or confirmed COVID patient, uh, the ESCVI recommended only for focus or focus deco. And equipment protection uh, in lower risk group, no need, not necessary to protect equipment, but in moderate and severe risk group or confirmed COVID patient, uh, eco, uh, eco equipment should be protected. And what is the recommendation for transesophageal echocardiography? Uh, let us see. Hand washing is mandatory for all risk group. Surgical masks and uh, gloves during transesophageal echocardiography is mandatory for all risk groups. In protective clothing or uh, protective gown or uh, coverall and uh, eye protection and head cap is uh, preferable in lower risk group, but mandatory in all moderate and severe risk group of transesophageal echocardiography. And a study, a full study is uh, recommended uh, for lower risk group, uh, and for full study is recommended for moderate moderate risk group, but focused uh, study is recommended for severe risk group. And uh, an equipment protection in transesophageal echocardiography. Uh, for mild and low risk group, uh, not necessary, but in moderate and high risk or, or uh, COVID positive patients need to protect all equipments properly. What is focused cardiac ultrasound study? Uh, that is recommended uh, for uh, some moderate and severe risk and confirmed COVID patients. Uh, the aim of, of focus echocardiography is to reduce the time of exposure with the patients to decrease the risk of contamination. Uh, the following uh, points are uh, emphasized um, by the uh, by the different bodies uh, in focus cardiography we have to see the left ventricle we will see the systolic global function zonal all motion and end diastolic cavity dimension 
again the in right ventricle uh, the right ventricular fractional area changes tricuspid annular plane systolic excretion that is step c and end diastolic cavity dimension and also the tricuspid regurgitation pressure gradient these few things we have to see in focus echocardiography in in case of valve assessment just gross signs of valvular disease if there is any present or not but if there is a critical clinical importance there should be an in depth evaluation of valvular morphology and in pericardium just thickening or is there any pericardial effusion or not these are the re recommended focus point of focus echo ecg monitoring during imaging can be omitted in this covid pandemic period this is important point if we do a focus or focus or cartilage echocardiogram is performed because of the covid 19 situation this should be stated in the report that we have uh, done focus echocardiography or we have done just screening echocardiography or we have cartilage echocardiogram just we have to mention the report that will uh, very much helpful for the uh, clinician what about stress echocardiography the treadmill or bicycle stress echocardiography test in patients with covid 19 may lead to exposure because of deep breathing or coughing during exercise so this test should generally be deferred or converted to pharmacologic stress echocardiography if essential for patient management what about transesophageal echocardiography t can be pro can promote the aerosolization of large amount of virus due to the coughing or gagging that may result during the procedure t should be postponed or cancelled if an alternative imaging modality can be used if uh, if we can use off axis transesophageal transesophageal echo views we can use contrast echography we can use contrast uh, ct scan we, and and we can use may i have uh, some uh, few, few 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 minutes may i have some few minutes hello Uh, no, uh, may no. may 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 have few few minutes only few minutes oh share your screen again thank you in software generated you should share your screen again just few slides mohsin bhai can you see my slides mohsin bhai yes so uh, so we can uh, do some alternative test uh, alternative uh, procedure uh, and uh, postpone the te if a management of eco laboratory stuff grouping of laboratory step uh, we small functional teams uh, and staggering their their work hours and uh, training is important for the step training and refreshing and upskilling uh, upskilling their uh, donning and doffing procedure is important routine twice daily temperature checks hoist on duty for duty for uh, staffs and mandatory for staff to take medical leave if unwell management of patient temperature and uh, temperature history taking should be done in waiting area and uh, patients Uh, deemed to have additional risk factor should be cohorted and evaluated in a designated staff by the appropriate pp patients coming for the examination should wear a face mask and uh, front opening shirt gown without any banyan minimize dwell and wait time just patient uh, not to uh, spend many time in uh, in the uh, in the eco lab physical segregation of the patients and restriction of the number of accompanying caregivers in waiting areas and service counters in ac setting echocardiography can be avoided in this setting especially for patients with hemodynamic unstable or post stmi complications in non stmi patients with positive troponins and clinical signs of heart failure echocardiography may be important to justify faster invasive revascularization procedure so uh, honorable chairpersons i i want to come conclude with these two slides uh, the covid 19 pa pandemic has focused us to consider how best to perform cardiac imaging in the right patients at the right time and how minimize the risks of cross infection for imagers and the patients if there is a suspicion of cardiac involvement the risk to benefit ratio of performing echocardiography becomes extremely helpful if the echocardiography is performed it should be focused and should be performed following all the protocols especially for the healthcare providers protection the stress echocardiography should be deferred the performance of transesophageal echocardiography should be considered only in highly selected cases that they are mandatory for patients undergoing emergency interventional procedures and lastly adaptability to the rapidly changing situation is required shobai ke dhonnobad dhorjo shokare shonar jonno dhonnobad thank you nurolam 
the nicely time, uh, time demanding presentation. Uh, Professor H. L. Luthuraman, sir, our chairperson, please few comments regarding these topics or any question for the Professor H. L. Luthuraman, sir. I have no question. I have uh, some comments. Thank you, yeah. Dr. Nuralam. Yeah. Thank you, Ajahn. Ajay, Ajay, Jug Gopuji ki shomai ekta khub shundur ekta topic select karar jonne. Abul shete ke khub shundur bhavi upostapun karar jonne. Ek ek self explanatory ekta uh, discussion chilo. Abar onay khub bhalo discussion kore chhe. Khubi bhalo hai chhe. Uh, hope for the best. Thank you. Uh, now we can go for the next person. Uh, next. I am requesting Dr. Ekya Manol Islam, our next presenter. Ego ka diga evolution right heart. Dr. Enke Manol Islam. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, I am just going to present shortly a broad chapter, Echocardiographic Evaluation of the Right Heart. This is very important and several established guidelines are available. And the latest one is from British Society of Echocardiography, which has published, which has been published in just 2020 last year. Uh, whenever we are going to assess right heart by echocardiography, what are the essentials? We have to think of structure, we have to think of function, including hemodynamics and some specific conditions. We have to know the basic views. Most of the views we have practiced in our day-to-day -day practice of echocardiography are helpful, but several are very important, especially the RV focused view, which has been given much emphasis nowadays. What is this? This is nothing but a modified epical view. And in this view, just to get this, get a typical epical four chamber view, and then move your transducer laterally to place RV at the center so that the LVOT is not into in your view and the LV apex is still at the top of the set and then rotate the transducer to obtain maximum RV basal diameter. And in this manner, you will get a good RV focused view and this view is recommended for performing most of the measurements nowadays. And I should mention two other uh, often less practiced views. One is right ventricular inflow view. In this view, along with other things, you will get the posterior leaflet of the tricuspid valve and off axis view, which may be a very good view uh, in case of adults in whom sometimes the subcostal view may not be adequately obtained. You have to know the basics of innervation, arterial supply, sorry, arterial supply of the right ventricle. And I am not going to spend much time on this. Most of the part of the right ventricle is supplied by the right coronary artery, and only the septal wall is supplied by the LED. And look at this, you have to pay some attention on the wall motion abnormality of the right ventricle. Like here on the left side, this is a patient with old uh, myocardial infarction. Here the lateral wall, basal and mid segments are almost akinating, but the apical segment is contracting well. And on the right side, this is a patient with ARVD and here most of the lateral wall are having very uh, uh, bad contraction. You have to pay some attention to the septum. Uh, you can get the D-shaped left ventricle, which may indicate pressure overload of the right ventricle. And on the left side, the, the septum is flattened during diastole, but during systole, it is still bulging out, giving the impression of volume overload. The next important assignment is to assess the chamber dimensions. The chamber dimensions are customarily assessed qualitatively, comparing the right ventricular dimensions with that of the left ventricle. But also sometimes quantitative assessments are mandatory. Uh, for the qualitative assessment, if the dimension of the right heart is up to the two thirds of the LV, it is normal. If it is between two thirds and but less than equal, then there is mild enlargement in equal, equal to left heart, then the uh, uh, right heart is moderately enlarged. And if the dimensions of the right ventricle exceeds that of the left ventricle, certainly there is severe enlargement. And there are a number of figures and numbers for the quantitative assessments of the right ventricle. Just you have to memorize some minimum numbers. What are those? You have to know the right ventricular basal diameter this is more than 41 is abnormal. 
and the right ventricular outflow tract in parasternal long axis view and short axis views. These are the important parameters and also the right ventricular wall thickness. I will highlight this in, just look at this on the left side, the right ventricle is still smaller than the left ventricle, so it is normal. On the right side, both the ventricles are of equal dimensions, giving the impression of moderately dilated right ventricle. And here, the right ventricle exceeds the diameter of the left ventricle. And as you know, that the apex of the heart is now forming by the right ventricle. So there is severely dilated right ventricle. And this is the concentric right ventricular hypertrophy. Uh, you may have a chart hanging in your eco lab uh, uh, because this is sometimes difficult to memorize. And for the chamber quantification of the right heart, RV focused view is now favored. And you have to take the measurements in N dash tone. Right ventricular outflow tract is assessed in two views. One is left parasternal long axis view and one is left parasternal short axis view at the level of red vessels. In the flex view, the normal dimension is uh, up to 30 millimeter. And in the short axis view, we can get two values. One is proximal and another one is distal. Just before the pulmonary valve, the distal measurement is taken and the upper limit of this is 27. And for the proximal, this is 30, 35. And for the assessment of the right ventricular wall thickness, we have to uh, take the subcostal view and the upper limit is five millimeter. Right atrial dimensions are less often taken. So I will not highlight on this. Uh, the next very important assignment is to assess the right ventricular systolic function. This is traditionally assessed qualitatively, but nowadays there are the quantitative measurements. For the assessment of global and regional functions, uh, a number of parameters are available like right ventricular fractional area change, DPDT, myocardial performance index, RV ejection fraction, right ventricular strain, and also the well-known tricuspid annular and systolic excursion and the S prime. Just to look at this, for the qualitative assessment, we are uh, seeing that on the left side, the right ventricle is dilated, also the right atrium and the right ventricle is poorly contracting, giving the impression that right ventricular systolic function is markedly impaired. What are the required minimum for right ventricular systolic function assessment in our day-to-day -day practice? According to the British Society of Echocardiography, we have to take at least TAPAC, RVS prime, and fractional area change. And at least one should be routinely reported. And for radial function assessment of the right ventricle, we have to report fractional area change, or if this is not possible, we have to stress on qualitative assessment statement that the radial function is adequate. For the uh, getting the values of TAPC and RVS prime, we have to take a good apical four chamber view. And then for TAPC, we have to place the M mode cursor and the uh, lateral annulus of the tricuspid valve. And for the RVS prime, we have to place pulse to have Doppler in the basal third of the lateral wall of the uh, tri uh, right ventricle. And the upper limit is up to uh, 17 millimeter for the TAPC and 9.5 centimeter per second for the right ventricular uh, S prime. For the fractional air change, again, the apical four chamber view is uh, used. And here, just this is in diastolic and this is in systolic area are calculated and then automatically software will give you a number. And the upper limit is more than 35%. That is the normal values is 35% or more. I am not going into the details of the right ventricular myocardial performance because this is not practiced in our day-to-day -day practice. RV strain is practicing more and more nowadays and uh, dedicated RV softwares are often not uh, available. If not, you can use the left ventricular uh, strain software and the, uh, roughly the uh, normal cutoff value is minus 20% for right ventricular free wall strain. You can use 3D eco if facilities are available, and this is uh, very close to the values obtained by cardiac MRI. So this is better. Next important thing, you have to assess right ventricular diastolic function, but this is often not assessed in our day-to-day -day practice methodically, but certainly we should have some impressions regarding this. 
the next important job is to have hemodynamic assessment. And for the hemodynamic assessment, you have to uh, pay attention to the inferior vena cava for the right atrial pressure assessment. It is done in, in just subcostal view. And you have to have the inferior vena cava and you have to uh, measure the diameter of the inferior vena cava just before the opening of the hepatic vein. And you all know that upper cutoff point is 20 millimeter. If it is more than 20 millimeter, it is dilated. And if the collapsibility is uh, less than 50%, this is abnormal. So I am not going to pay much time on the values because you often know this. And look at this, here the uh, IVC is of normal caliber, it is collapsing well. So giving the impression of normal right atrial pressure and here the IVC is being collapsed uh, less, giving the impression of raised right atrial pressure. You have to pay special attention to calculating the PASP. For the PASP, you know that the, we use the tricuspid velocity, maximum tricuspid velocity. And from this, we, we get the right ventricular systolic pressure. And if we uh, add to this the right atrial pressure, we will get the pulmonary artery systolic pressure if there is no RVOT or any obstruction anywhere. Look at this. This is typical for chamber view, having a good quality tricuspid degurgitation. And from this, we can get the maximum tricuspid uh, uh, velocity and pressure 48 millimeter mercury. And the IVC is dilated 26 millimeter and collapsibility is less than 50 percent. So we should add 15 millimeter. And if we add 15 millimeter to 48 millimeter, we will get the PSP value of 63 millimeter. And I have, I uh, should put special emphasis that you should not uh, forget the left heart because both are brothers. And uh, look at this, there is much RV systolic dysfunction and this is due to just left ventricular uh, mitral valve uh, uh, stenosis. That is a left ventricular structure. And here there is raised <coughs> systolic pressure and this is due to ICM, this is a left heart disease. Look for specific abnormalities, know the normal variants like the GRE network and the interatrial septal aneurysm, and also know the uh, uh, other valvular abnormalities like my tricuspid stenosis. This is a tricuspid stenosis. This is another case of tricuspid stenosis. So you have to put special attention and you have to just here, you are getting some sorts of uh, disease at the affecting the apex in a patient with marked eosinophilia. This is a suspected case of endomyocardial fibrosis coming to Sir Solomon Medical College Hospital. And this is a COVID-19 patient who presented with pulmonary thromboembolism. And here, whenever echocardiography was done, there was evidence of infective endocarditis affecting the tricuspid valve. With this, I like to conclude that mind it, the right heart deserves a right share in your day-to-day -day practice. Otherwise, you will be a disaster in disaster. Thank you all for patient sharing. Thank you, Dr. Manwar. <laughs> Boye Amade Bushiri on Namne into Doctor Mahmoud Kubri Jawan, sir. Amade Uni Nataka Juno, Okunu Kati, she will Otunto short shome. Chomot correct short representation is nicely right heart. Thank you, Doctor Monor again, and also Doctor Nuralom. I am requesting Doctor Professor MD Saipul Islam, sir. Do you hear me? Professor Mahmoud Saipul Islam, sir. I think uh, connect, connected. And now we're using Major General Rabbani, sir. Please comment the both important topics. Major General Rabbani, sir. Please unmute, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Uh, actually, it is very rewarding for me because I have learned a lot of things from Nuralom who has talked about the protection from COVID for the, the doctors as well as the eco staff. And Manohar Islam, he has done a very good job by telling us the echocardiographic assessment of the right ventricle. So my question to your neural, uh, one thing you have told that plastic bed sheet should be taken uh, for protection. Oh, yes, it's good, but if we use disposable uh, paper bed sheet, then it, it will be okay. This is a, one question. Another question to you, in your Ecolab, how many confirmed patients of COVID 
has done eco and how many left stuff were contaminated from that? This is the two questions to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, actually, yes, you, or you have mentioned that uh, disposable uh, disposable tissue uh, that, I, that we call usually bed tissue, this could be a good alternative, I think, sir. You are right, sir. Uh, when it is not available, we can use that uh, plastic bed sheet and uh, it can be cleaned after each examination. And regarding, sir, your second question, uh, uh, in my, uh, as I am working in a uh, non-COVID hospital, I didn't have no experience of doing uh, echocardiography in a COVID-positive patient uh, with my known. But I don't know. Uh, I don't know if uh, if any patient I have done with COVID-19 positive patient, and so the exact uh, statistics I don't know how many uh, staffs or, or others are contaminated by that patient. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm request, I'm requesting Professor Abdullah Shoyunda, sir, uh, is the Secretary of Bangladesh Cardiac Society uh, regarding the issue because he will publish a paper, Bangladesh Cardiac Society, Indian Ecocardiography Journal, sir, contributed a lot this, this article. Sir, please comment on. There was a paper published in the jointly in the Indian uh, Ecocardiography Journal and the Cardiovascular Journal which elaborated on the protective uh, measures, though there are some strict points are there, which we, uh, it is very difficult to follow the in the day-to-day -day practice. But in those time, it was published about three or four months back when the corona was at the at its high peak. It, it was then rational. But I, I think the, this time when the, the, the transmission rate appears to be very low, we may some, uh, have some relaxation only the personal protection and protecting the uh, instruments from the contaminating. Uh, that will be good for the practical purposes, I think. Thank you. Yeah, add something, sir. Yeah, because I have a, a good experience in uh, doing COVID positive patients. Uh, used to do regularly. And in the COVID ICU, I used to do uh, echocardiogram. So we are uh, using only surgical uh, gown and we don't wear gloves. Because gloves is one, one of the important source of contaminating infection. Rather, we uh, do hand wash or sanitizer. We used to use sanitizer. And from the patient to patient, when we do in the same uh, uh, ward, we, don't, uh, we can use same surgical uh, uh, gown. But whenever we are uh, out of the uh, uh, ward, then we usually uh, doing uh, doffing of the gowns. So we are doing regularly and contamination rate is hardly uh, rare. But uh, I, 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 I was COVID positive and I suffered a lot. But still, uh, that is not because of the uh, patients doing uh, echocardiogram in the COVID ward. Rather, it is happened in my chamber. So far, uh, of my knowledge. Current patient was coughing in front of me, and that period of time I had only surgical uh, mask. That is the uh, condition where I was infected. But doing echocardiogram in the patient bed, it is uh, not. Uh, if patient is on the lateral position, you are on the right side, and patient on the left lateral position, and patient having the mask, that is very important to have. And at the same time, one should ask the patient not to cough. That is more important. So if one can do something like that, uh, so usually user transmission is very rare. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, in the meantime, is here Professor Mahurahan Babu here, or Dr. Jilly Rahman and Dr. Uh, Selim, uh, Hayullah Selim here from Silet. So uh, we should conclude our session because AGM, annual general meeting at four o'clock, 